Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and today's video subject is a little different than my usual fare, but uh, in my advanced age here of 70 years old, I've developed a uh, certain skill here or dexterity with the tendons on the top of my hand, and I am able to manipulate small objects, as you can see. Yeah. You see? Hmm. It's mind over matter. No, of course, I'm just talking foolishness. That's a magnet. But these aren't just any old magnets. These are neodymium magnets that I've been talking about in some of my other videos, and there'll be upcoming videos where I have practical uses for these making some shop accessories. But today we'll just have a little fun and show you some different phenomenon here according to Lenz's Law. But uh, let's take a look first at Lenz's Law without getting too uh, uh, educational here. On top here is Lenz's Law stated very briefly but it's, it's much more complicated on, than that and I've found this on uh, Wikipedia and you can look it up if you're interested but it will immediately turn into a math course and if you don't understand uh, some of that which I do not myself uh, you, you will find it of little interest but Lenz's Law states that the current induced in a circuit due to a change or a motion in a magnetic field is so directed as to oppose the change in flux or to exert a mechanical force opposing the motion. And then a couple different uh, uh, viewers on YouTube here, this cat, and I can't pronounce that one, where I wrote this in regards to uh, a magnet I showed in one of the other videos, but uh, cat says that a magnet when moving past copper generates electric current in the copper and the electric current in the copper generates a magnetic field and that magnetic field opposes the magnetic field of your small neo magnet simple and elegant demonstration and the other man here states that magnetic flux inducing eddy currents in a conductor which itself creates a magnetic flux which opposes the magnet flux now is all that clear as mud and thank you guys for these comments here because that helped me a little bit too. But I'm not uh, so interested in, in uh, talking about this. It's just uh, showing us these phenomena. So let's get on with the show. I've bought quite a selection of these neo magnets, and uh, I always get them from eBay. But you may find them in stores, but probably not. And if you ask the bearded lady, she's gonna say, "What's a neo magnet? Uh, you're nuts! Get out of here!" But uh, uh, and they came from China, I believe. Now, do not confuse these with the ceramic type magnets, which you've had for years, and the cheap refrigerator magnets that have little or no magnetism. Because these are incredibly powerful, and you can see that I have them uh, uh, separated here by space, because that's really the only insulator, if you will. Because otherwise, you know, it just becomes a nuisance as they attract each other. And some of these have got chipped from banging together. I didn't realize they would do that, but look at that big chip out of my most expensive magnet. Now, do not let small children play with these. My granddaughter pinched the heck out of her finger yesterday trying to separate these. And uh, they, they have a mind of their own, as you can see here. And uh, the danger of a child swallowing these is pretty great. But uh, So be careful of these. I've always been interested in magnets and magnetism, and uh, one of the first toys that I got, I suppose I was five years old, my dad bought my brother and I a set of those uh, little Scotty dogs. One was white and one was black, and uh, you could play with those and, and uh, attract and, uh, and uh, all of that, oppose with them. And my brother and I had a lot of fun, but of course we would fight about it because we only had one pair of them. Uh, Dad didn't buy us many toys. That was right after the war, and they weren't available for one thing, but uh, he got us interested in, uh, in this type of thing because of, of what uh, toys he did supply to us. So I'm thankful for that, actually. I remember in physics class, I think in junior college, the teacher talking about uh, ferromagnetic materials and paramagnetic, and yet there was a third term, and I don't recall it, nor do I care. But we know, of course, that magnets can be attracted to uh, mainly iron and steel. But uh, 
it has some effect on nickel and, and a few other materials, but not quite the same as, as iron, which is, of course, magnetic. But other materials, such as copper, brass, and aluminum, also have a reaction to magnetism, but only very strong magnets, such as these neomagnets. You certainly won't notice any of this phenomena with these cheap little uh, magnets that, that we're used to. And this is a 22-pound block of copper. This is the same experiment that I performed in one of my this and that uh, videos, just to, as a little preview. And we got copper tubing here, but it's a thick wall. It's not regular plumbing tubing, but dropping this stag, stack of uh, magnets down there. Watch. I have a heck of a time with my apparatus here because anything that is magnetic is just a nightmare. So I had to use a piece of aluminum and I can't use steel clamps. It's, I had to tape it and, and uh, so it's, it's a bit of a problem. This is a piece of brass tubing. Brass, of course, being an alloy of copper. And I have uh, here a magnet that uh, is approximately the diameter. Actually, there's two magnets stuck together. But if you were to drop a nail through here, or not, or anything made out of steel, such as this, as you know, it'll fall right through. But you drop these magnets through, and this is when Lenz's law takes effect. You see how long it took for those magnets to fall through there? And that was shown in one of my other videos. What I have here is actually a piece of one inch copper tubing and since I couldn't come up with any thick wall copper, you know, where are you going to get it? I even went to the scrap yard and of course they didn't have any. So I, uh, I wrapped copper that I had burned out and this is about number eight wire. I had to burn that out, get the insulation off of it and uh, that looked like this. I had about a hundred feet of it. And there's three or four layers on here, so that really amounts to a pretty good copper mass. But when we take this same big magnet and drop it through here, watch it come out the bottom. It'll take several seconds. Is this stuck? No, there it is. Let's do it again. And you say, no, that's just friction. No, it's not. Now here's the same experiment. Looking from above with a light under there. And let's see if we can see what's happening. You see how it literally seems to float? Let's look at it again. No, I did not slow the camera down. You can hear my voice's normal uh, level. Speed. What I have here is a aluminum tube exactly two feet long and it's about two inches not about, it's exactly two inches in diameter with a one and one sixteenth hole. Now that effect that uh, copper had on this magnet is very similar to aluminum and I cannot measure it but I would think the copper would be greater but I'll do the same uh, experiment here by dropping that magnet through it and it's going to take quite a while to go through believe me. Let's try this one inch magnet now. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand, eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand, eleven thousand, twelve thousand, thirteen thousand. Wow, that took thirteen seconds to fall through. Is that amazing? Okay, same experiment. I'll drop it down the bore of the cannon.
seems to levitate. Finally dropped through. Interesting. Now you children out there, read back through this and this will be a great science project for you and you'll wow your teacher because she will never have heard of this. When I was recently in Branson, Missouri, I went to a tool store and, and I did find some uh, Neo magnets. And they were fairly cheap, but they will lie to you. They always tell you the dimensions in uh, the uh, Imperial system, but in fact, uh, when you buy them, they are metric. But some of them are close, you know, half inches close to 12 or 13 millimeters. But all the ones you're going to find, I believe, on uh, e eBay are going to be metric. Now, a few minutes ago, I showed you uh, magnets dropping through this rather thick wall copper. Now I'm going to show it to you with uh, just common household copper that you would use in your plumbing. And you'll see that there is a difference. So the wall thickness matters. So look at this, and I know I'm overdoing this, but I had to use all of the materials that I bought. One more time. There you go. Slow, but not as slow as with the thick wall brass or copper or aluminum. Now I've got a lot more to do here. I'm not even halfway done, and I'll have to divide the uh, video into two. But I have clamped together here some wood. It's just pine or fir. Three and three quarters thick. And I'm just trying to determine how much uh, thickness we need, you know, before the magnetism uh, cannot pass through it. And granted, this is softwood. You know, I'm having a heck of a time here. Anytime I set anything down, bang, the magnet attracted to it. And sometimes I can't find the magnets because I put the tool away. So I'm, I'm a bit, old Tubal Cane's a little bit frustrated. But there's a magnet there, and I'll put my big one here. By the way, on eBay, I saw one like this, and it's the size of a hockey puck. And it was $500. And it's a big problem shipping these because uh, the only th way you can insulate uh, the uh, magnetism, and that's the incorrect word, is just space. So they need to be shipped in uh, containers that, that uh, have a lot of space in them. And uh, the Postal Department's having a fit about these. I, they possibly can damage media in the mail. I, I do not know for sure. But here, what did I say, three and three quarters? And I've been... Uh, You can see it's just barely passing through, but yet it is. And then when we add another quarter inch, that's about it, which brings it up to a full four inches. Well, actually you can see it moving ever so slightly, can't you? But not much. Let's look at that closer. Look at all the chips in these magnets from these experiments, but can you see it moving just a little bit? Oh, there it is. And that's four inches. Now looking over here at this copper, and this uh, copper is exactly two inches thick. And I hope I don't drop that on my toe. Oh wow, that's like nothing. I'm going to show you a lot more about that levitating here, so, so stand by.